Our service this morning is entitled, Here We Stand, and it, together with our devotion now, is based upon a series of scripture readings, which will be read to us by Pastor Shinnick following our devotion. Here We Stand. It's a statement of faith, a statement of conviction, words which we are probably all familiar with, those words of Martin Luther, which we remember particularly at Reformation time, as still echoing in our minds against those courtroom walls of Worms, Germany. But as in Luther's days, so also in ours, it is a statement which is presupposed by question. Where do you stand? And isn't life full of situations posing this question? whether it's in matters regarding politics, what you like to eat, the form of entertainment you prefer. Where you stand is based upon your philosophies, your likes, and your interests. But now, where do you stand regarding the really most important issues of life, the spiritual matters? Where do you stand? You, a chosen people, each handpicked by God himself to be his child, his believer, a recipient of his amazing grace. You, a sinner turned saint, through your Savior's redeeming blood, a member of Christ's spiritual kingdom. You, a very special individual in God's eyes, one to be set apart from this evil world. And you, a disciple of Jesus, directed to be completely different from the deviant and desecrated deeds of the devil and his cohorts. Where do you stand? Where do you stand when you are enticed by those tempting you to sin as happened to Joseph? when he was bombarded by that continual illicit beckoning of Potiphar's wife to commit adultery with her? Where do you stand when you meet head on with the disappointments of life? Financial setbacks, disease, or even death like Martha, who while tearfully trying to cope with that loss of her dear brother Lazarus, was asked by Jesus that most important of all of life's questions, do you believe in me? And where do you stand when, like Martin Luther, you are called into question concerning matters of your religious beliefs or your profession of faith to which you all publicly espouse and then just naturally exhibit by your conduct correspondence and conversation. Where do you stand? A question crucial to our Christian faith, but its answer confidently conveyed by our Christian commitment. Well, as believing children of God, here we stand with Joseph and Martha and Luther and also many multitudes of others on God's word, rooted and grounded in the truths of God's inspired revelation, and then armored and equipped with the teachings of God's inerrant truth. Yes, here we stand on God's word in our day-by-day -day lives as the hopes and happiness of our earthly existence continue to be tainted by tears and turmoil or terrorism. In all of this, here we stand on God's word, redeemed, restored, forgiven of our own personal sinfulness by the blood of our own perfect Savior, Jesus. Yes, here we stand on God's word, the only position in all of this world 
capable of assuring us to be comforted in our sorrows, courageous in confession, triumphant over temptation, and pumped up for proclamation of that precious gospel promise, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And as we heed our living Savior's directive and take this gospel proclamation into all the world, beginning with our own hometowns, and as we walk, march, press onward, forward in Christ, illuminating this dark world of sin with the light of Christ's forgiveness, we can do so boldly and zealously because of that position of where we stand on the true teachings and sound doctrines of God's holy word. So here we stand, man, woman, girl, and boy, on God's word, here we stand alongside countless others of believers down through the ages to all eternity. Here we stand with those individuals cited in our scripture readings for this morning, who by their words, by their behavior, some of them even in the face of torture and death itself, declared most confidently, here we stand on the comfort and strength of God's holy word. <laughs>